Hello and welcome back to the next lesson, where I am trying to teach you several ways of making flat shadows and adding them into your compositions. We have our simple animation, the light source is flying above it and the first flat shadows have been applied to the Long Shadows number 1 animation. Now we are heading to Long Shadows 2 and we want to add flat shadows to this animation. Perhaps so it will be easier for us to start out, we will use only one text. So I deselect everything else what is left. I also want to hide those layers so they will not get in the way. For that we can use the Shy option. The Shy option allows us to hide each layer we don't want to see at a given time. So I want to hide all of these other layers apart from the background and the actual layer we will work on. So I click this little icon. If you don't see this icon, you can toggle the switches and modus here. And now we just have to activate the shy option for the entire composition. Once I hit that, all layers are hidden. Okay, for this technique, we'll use the repeater to create nice, very parallel flat shadows going from this word. So we need shape outlines. If you have a text layer, let me quickly unshy them. If I would have a text layer, this would be the original layer. And this would be our shadow. So if you have only a text, right click on it and hit create shapes from text. This way you will get the text and the shape layer. Okay, I'll once again shy everything. I have a shape layer, not a text, so I simply duplicate it. I want to duplicate it and I want to rename it so it will be easier for us to work on it. I hit enter or return if you are on a Mac and I write here shadow and here hard text. Well, let me check. It isn't actually that hard, so it's a really light text, but okay, we have the two layers. Now let's start working on the shadow. I open up the shape layer. I see some keyframes are already here because this is an animation, but that's no problem. I just hit add and I will add a repeater. This is a very simple way of repeating one layer so many times that it will create an illusion if it would be a shadow. To do this, go to the repeater, open up the repeater. We will later on work with the copies, but right now we don't need much copies. It can stay at three or nine, it doesn't matter. You only have to open transform the repeater and work with the position. What I want to achieve is write one pixel here and one pixel here. This is the X axis and this is the Y axis. This allows us to create a shadow by moving over the number of copies we have on this object. As you see, the more copies I create, the bigger the shadow gets. Now, of course, as previously, there are pros and cons to this technique. The biggest pros is that it is perfectly parallel and it's so easy to set up. But the downside is that we need to work on two layers. If you want, for example, this shadow to go to the left here, this is no problem, you just have to work with the position. Let me open the position, I right click on it and I edit the value. If I would set it to a negative one on the X axis, the shadow would go here. The same goes for the Y axis. Now the shadow will go up. If I would leave the X at a positive one, it will go here. So depending on which angle you want to achieve, you have to work with the positions. You have to acknowledge that this time it was much easier to work with the position because we can link it and you can just play around with the shadow. Here we need to be much more precise, but it's also definitely worth to know because we can work with the position. For example, I press 0.5 and the shadow goes just a little bit flatter here. I can of course make more copies until I get the right animation. I could of course keyframe it and create some nice animations like making this amount of copies, making less copies. Well, they are pretty big and heavy now. And I would have a nice animation where the shadow is growing without me working on a light source or anything else. So it's really simple to set this up. And what else you need to do? Very, very simple. You can click on the shadow and since this is a shape layer, I can of course change the fill color just by clicking here 
changing the color for example to a dark red, now I want to press T on my keyboard. By opening the opacity I see that I was working with the opacity here but I can simply delete those keyframes and lower the opacity to for example the amount I want to achieve in this little animation in the shadow I want to see. Since this shadow as I press U to reveal all the keyframes that are used has the same rotation because it was copied over, I have the same nice little animation and the shadow follows the original layer. Let us preview it on full quality because why not? Now you can see all there is to it. You can always go to the shadow layer, open it up, open the repeater, open the transform repeater and work with the position. This is the only thing you need to change if you want to change the angle of the shadow. If you want to change the length of the shadow, only work with the copies. Well, it's a bit too heavy. Let me make it smaller, maybe 500, okay. Most often if you are working with flat shadows, you are going until you grow them to the bounds. So these artifacts are not visible. But of course, there are a few techniques where this is perfectly usable and you can enhance this entire design. Let me show you a quick example. What could we do here? Flat design is very often used for social icons nowadays or for buttons on websites. So let me maybe move this a little bit towards the middle. It's just so I see it better. Remember to have all layers deselected because we want to create a new layer. I create a new box, something like that. Well, I don't like this color quite, so let me change it to maybe, I don't know. Let's work with the original and yeah, go towards a more brown effect. Okay, I have the shape layer. I click enter and I make it boxed. Maybe the color is a bit too dark. I'm sorry, I'm really messy with those colors today. Yeah, this looks quite a bit better. Okay, I have the box, I close it. I duplicate the box and I place one under the shadow and one above the shadow. I'll toggle the switches and modes because I need the track mat option. I need to make only one change on the shadow. I select alpha matte box. All right, this already looks like a nice flat icon. Of course, the boxes are pretty big. I need to adjust them. I'm sorry for that. Once again, wow, I'm really bad with those positionings today. I'm sorry. Okay, but this all already looks a bit better. Maybe a bit too flat. I could select, for example, both boxes, go to a simple effect, like some glow or shadow, maybe drop shadow will be simpler. I select the box, the box which is visible of course, and I create a drop shadow. Right now we have a really, really subtle shadow under this box, just so it looks a bit more clickable and a bit more enjoyable. And there you have it. This is the perfect usage of those parallel flat shadows using the repeater. You can always go back to shadow, open the repeater, as I told you before, and work with the positions. The positions will determine the angle of the shadow. Well, of course, we got a bit away from the original design, but I didn't know which technique I'll use to which animation. I just made several options for you so you can choose. Here's, for example, a rolling coconut, and you can use each composition you want, really, when you are creating these techniques or your own composition. It is really fun to create those animations. We should now copy over those keyframes also to this box so it also would fly around but that's not the topic the topic was to create those flat shadows and as you see we created a really nice design out of it and closed it up in a little box working with the track mat and setting the alphas is a separate topic which we should cover in a completely other lesson but for here you only need to know that you should if you have the shadow, create one box here, one box here, maybe a rounded circle. You can really choose what you want. Maybe place a Facebook icon here or a Twitter icon, make a rounded circle around it and just try to work with those flat shadows. If the shadow will be too short, just go to the repeater, make more copies and you will be done with this design. This design looks very simple but very appropriate to the effect we wanted to achieve. Thank you for your attention and this lesson. I hope you got curious and I can't wait to see what will you prepare in those lessons. So now you can head over to the next lesson and let us learn another technique of making those shadows.